I'm so tired at the moment, so full of stress and worry. I haven't been down to the woods for a long time. I haven't made a YouTube video for even longer. It's at times like this when it would be better to be an Epicurean because the Epicureans believed you're, if you've perfected your philosophy, you wouldn't even feel your troubles. Whereas for a Stoic, you think not to feel your troubles wouldn't be human, but still being Epicurean would be good at times like this. You must be thinking a good Stoic would know you leave behind your worldly troubles, you don't worry about things you can't control, which I agree, that's true. But if your country's at risk, then even the most lazy Stoic has to leave behind the woods and go into the world and try and sort it all out. Or at least that's what I'm trying to do. You might have seen in April something very unusual happened in London. Do you see those Extinction Rebellion? They occupied four major sites in London, tried to cause disruption to raise awareness about the climate emergency. It's all going to happen again in October, on Monday, October the 7th, which as I make this now is Saturday, October the 5th. So two days time, it's all going to happen again. This time it's going to be much bigger. This time the police and the politicians seem to be more determined to stop it much more quickly. So no one's really sure what's going to happen. I suppose Extinction Rebellion must have made their plans. The police have made their plans and they've been announcing them to um, to the media. You know, they're going to be much more much more active in tackling tackling the goings on. But really no one knows what's going to happen. Last time the protest lasted nearly two weeks. There's no guarantee that will happen again. In fact, it's quite possible the police will try and stop it maybe in the first two hours or something. Last time the police were very nice, it was all very civilised. It's quite possible this time things won't be quite so nice, you know, the police will be more, more determined to sort us out. So, what's going to happen? I think it's time for some Seneca. We can never have faith in ourselves except when many difficulties have confronted us, on this side and on that, and have occasionally even come to close quarters with us. It is only in this way that the true spirit can be tested the spirit that will never consent to come under the jurisdiction of things external to ourselves. So in those two sentences, I think Seneca sums up the two key parts of being a Stoic. Number one, we can never have faith in ourselves except when many difficulties have confronted us. So you have to go into the world and test your, your Stoic principles out, test yourself out to see if you're living up to your Stoic ideals. Sometimes people think, you sit in a nice room and you read a book about Stoicism and then it helps you live your life, which I'm sure it does. But really, it's the other way around. You live your life trying to follow your Stoic values. You come to understand them better because you've tried them out. You understand yourself better. Do you really live up to them? And then, by having a better understanding of Stoicism, a better understanding of the world and your place in it, that helps you to have a peaceful mind and then you get the benefits. So it's not philosophy helps your real world, it's the real world, living in the real world helps your philosophy and that helps you. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, is only in this way the true spirit can be tested, the thing that will never consent to come under the jurisdiction of things external to ourselves. So when I'm worried about what the police will do, how long will the protests last, will they last two weeks or two hours, all of these things are outside of my control, so I shouldn't have been worrying about them in the first place. So instead of worrying about things I can't do anything about, like how long the protests will last, two hours or two weeks, or how the police will behave, much better just to concentrate on the things I can control. For example, here I am in April being arrested, sitting on the road. Look how respectful and polite and calm both me and the police officer are trying to be, you know. I say I respect the role you're carrying out. And he thanks me and touches my arm in a kindly way. Now, I know two, um, two people have shown that video to their sons and daughters and held it up as an example of how to behave properly, you know. There can be very few people who get arrested and are held up to future generations as, as that's the right thing to do. But having said that, it's, in that atmosphere it was quite easy to do, wasn't it? You know, it would be quite an obnoxious thing to be rude to someone else in that atmosphere. What happens if things aren't quite so nice? Am I going to be able to keep that, you know, act in the way I think is best? Act in the same way again, you know, calm and respectful and polite? If people are shouting at you, physically dragging you off the road and all those sorts of things? 
this is when really you will you will um theories about the right way to behave your stoic principles will really will get tested good so what help has seneca got when facing troubles like this what i advise you to do is this not to be unhappy before the crisis comes since it may be that the dangers which seem to be threatening you will never come they certainly have not come yet accordingly some things torment us more than they ought to some torment us before they ought to, and some torment us when they ought not to torment us at all. We are in the habit of exaggerating or imagining or anticipating sorrow. How often has the unexpected never come to pass? And even though it is ordained to be, what do you gain by running ahead to meet your suffering? You will suffer soon enough when it arrives. So look forward meanwhile to better things. Which to me, I don't want to be, I don't want to be critical of Seneca, but that to me sounds like positive thinking. And surely, you know, a good Stoic should be more interested about having a good understanding of the world and truth and all that sort of stuff and not fooling yourself with positive thinking. But then, then he goes on to say, Truth has its own definite boundaries, but what arises from uncertainty is delivered over to guesswork and the irresponsible licence of a frightened mind. There are more things likely to frighten us than there are to crush us. We suffer more in imagination than in reality. Let us then look carefully into the matter. It is likely that some troubles will befall us, but it is not yet a present fact. But if we indulge our fears to the greatest possible extent, there is no limit to our sorrows. In this matter, let prudence help you, and with a resolute spirit, even when it is in plain sight. That's easy for Seneca to say, 2,000 years away. But then he goes on to be a bit more helpful. He says, if you can't do this, it well, says, if you cannot do this, counter one weakness with another and temper your fear with hope. Now, normally, Stoics don't like um, hope because it's, you know, it relies on something you can't control. You hope you might gain something. You fear you might not get it. You're, you're you know, you're just sort of um, tormenting yourself. But then he says... Um, counter one weak with weakness with another so he's accepting hope is a weakness but he's you know you're using it to fight fear is that okay i don't know well i'm desperate enough now i, sh I shall follow that guidance normally i try to finish with something positive and inspiring from seneca but given the current situation i'm instead going to read something from the secretary general of the united nations if we do not change course by 2020, we risk missing the point where we can avoid runaway climate change with disastrous consequences for people and all the natural systems that sustain us. So, the future of our societies are at risk, you know. Disastrous consequences for people and all the natural systems that sustain us. The future of civilization, the future of the human race, you know, what else can an honest man do than get up Monday morning and go off into the world? So watch the news on um, Monday the 7th of October. Where we will find out how, um, how groundless my fears were and how real they were. Great. <laughs>